What if I told you that the taxable equivalent yield on your savings account could be well over 6%? We're talking all about how you can maximize the interest on idle cash, especially if you are someone with elevated income. You do not want to miss it. If it's your first time here, my name is John Boyd. I'm a certified financial planner and I'm the founder and lead wealth advisor at Modern Wealth. That's modern spelt with no vowels, wealth. We're a fiduciary fee-only financial planning firm that specializes on the tax and financial planning issues directly related to millennials with elevated income. And I'm so glad that you're here today because we have a good one for you. So if you're someone who has maybe a lot of cash parked in a savings account and it's getting 0.001% interest, or if you're someone who maybe discovered a decent savings account, but you're paying a lot of tax on that interest, we're going to talk about how you as, as a millennial with elevated income, or if you're listening to this and you just have elevated income and you're just trying to maximize interest on cash, we're going to talk about some strategies that a lot of people don't realize exist and are relatively easy to get access to. Before we dive in, if you like what you hear today, go ahead and go to the description of this episode and click on the link to our learning center. In the top right, there'll be a link to our weekly planning insights newsletter where we talk about everything from taxes, retirement planning, investments, and more. You do not want to miss it. So go ahead and subscribe. So before we dive in and talk about maybe well-known savings account optimization strategies, let's start with some of the ones that I believe get swept under the rug or just get neglected, right? Not enough people are talking about them. So the first strategy that we're talking about today is a muni money market fund. A muni money market fund can be a way to really maximize interest on idle cash and on top of that, generate tax-free income. Really, really powerful, especially in this interest rate environment. So what the heck is it? What is a muni? What is a money market fund? So first, let's talk about what a muni is. So when I say muni, I'm referring to a municipal bond. And if you don't know what a municipal bond is, here's just an easy example. So let's say that the city that you live in, let's say that the freeway uh, has a bunch of potholes in it and it needs pretty expensive repairs to fix all the damage to the road. So rather than the city that you live in or state that you live in, go ahead and pay cash for that. They go ahead and finance that project. So when a municipality or state finances a project, they don't just use their you know, cash back credit card, right? They go and issue out bonds, IOUs. So they go ahead and raise capital in the form of bonds. When you buy a bond, you are effectively buying an IOU, right? It's the easiest way to think about it. You give out capital the municipality use, utilizes that capital for its intended purpose. And in exchange, you get interest. So really, really straightforward. Nothing too crazy about that. But here's why it's really powerful. When you have muni bonds, the interest that's generated from them is completely tax-free on the federal level, right? That's extremely powerful, especially if you're in a relatively elevated tax bracket and the taxes that you pay eats into the interest that you're generating. If all of a sudden you had a vehicle that that interest was tax-free, that's extremely powerful. And if you're wondering why not everyone invested in muni money market fund or munis period, the trade-off is, is because you're getting that a tax-free benefit, the yield, the interest on them is lower. So for a lot of folks, just your average person, right? If you're only making $60,000 a year and you invest in a muni money market fund, right? You're, you might not see a huge net benefit. 
But if you're in an elevated tax bracket and you do the math, the tax savings that you're getting, your taxable equivalent yield could be very lucrative. Add on top of that, if you buy a muni bond from the state you live in, the interest now is tax-free on the state level as well. So you have tax-free savings for Fed and state. That's huge, huge, especially if you live somewhere like California. So let me give you a real life example. So I'm not going to state the name of the particular fund just because I don't want to give a direct recommendation to uh, a bunch of podcast listeners that are not actual clients. I'm not going to say the name of the fund, but this is a, a, a real life example. A New York based municipal money market fund. The current yield on it as of the recording of this episode, and again, there's tons of these, but this is just one example. The current yield on this fund was 3.31%, 3.31%. If you are in the highest tax bracket living in the state of New York, where this fund is, is primarily composed of, the taxable equivalent yield is 6.35%. That means that until you can get a savings account, let's say, that will give you interest over 6.35%, this is going to be a better deal. Your taxable equivalent interest is 6.35%. That is how much tax savings you're receiving and how much it's juicing the interest. That's extremely powerful, extremely powerful. Now, again, we're using New York as an example, but you get the idea of how much the tax savings, especially if you're someone with elevated income, how big of a difference that this could potentially make. Now, what are the mechanics of a money market fund? Well, the money market fund itself is comprised of ultra short duration fixed income, right? So, so the underlying municipal bonds in this fund are all maturing within the next couple of days, right? I mean, it's ultra short duration. So the idea behind the fund where you would park this money is that it's incredibly safe, it's super liquid, and that the value is to remain stable. Okay, so let me dive into that part a little bit further. So these muni money market funds, they trade most of the time just like a traditional mutual fund. Okay, so you'll buy into it, and then when you need cash, you sell out. Now, unlike a normal mutual fund, you're not going to see the price fluctuate every day. Instead, what you're going to see, the value of the fund is $1. What that means is that you put in a dollar, you get out a dollar, right? It's, it's supposed to be dollar for dollar redemption. And because the fund itself is comprised of ultra short duration fixed income that is all maturing within the next couple of days, and it's all high quality, that dollar for dollar value will generally remain stable at all times. Now, in the most technical of senses, is there risk with a money market fund? Technically, yes. Technically, yes. The most recent example of that was in 2008. There were money market funds that were overly exposed to mortgage-backed securities. And when the mortgage-backed securities market exploded and everyone rushed to the exit to pull their money out of the fund, that caused that dollar value to break. This is an expression called breaking the buck. So the value dropped. And so now, if you pulled money out, you weren't guaranteed dollar for dollar redemption. Now, this is a freak example. During 2008, most money market funds were fine. And since then, there's been significant reforms to add additional protections to money market funds. Because the reality is, is that most large institutions, ultra affluent individuals, this is how they park 
their cash. They aren't, they generally are not utilizing um, a high yield savings account, for example. Most of the time, their primary cash mechanism is a money market fund. And so in 2020, when we had COVID break out and we all thought that we were on the brink of a Great Depression, even during that cataclysmic period of time from February to March of 2020, money market funds remained very stable. So again, is there technically risk? Yes, but it is highly, highly, highly unlikely anything is to happen to the underlying cash in the fund, especially if the underlying securities within the fund are really safe. And in this case, we're talking about a fund comprised of high quality municipal bonds that are all maturing within the next couple of days and are all backed by the full faith of the municipality that issued them. Now, let's say that maybe you wouldn't receive a huge benefit from a muni money market fund, right? Maybe you are, you know, you have elevated income, but you're not necessarily in a extremely high tax bracket. Or maybe that, you know what, I just don't want to have muni bond exposure, period. I want to look for alternatives. So what are some alternatives to parking your cash? Well, you could explore just plain old treasuries, right? And if you're not familiar with treasuries, treasuries are just IOUs from the U.S. government, right? So the same concept as municipalities, but it's the U.S. government that's backing treasuries. There is an expression in the world of investing that the only thing more liquid than water is a United States treasury. It's highly liquid, highly safe. When other governments worldwide look for a safe place to park their cash, they often flee to treasuries. U.S. treasuries are incredibly powerful. Now, with treasuries, you can purchase them individually or through a fund. Now, if you were going to do this for a savings account effectively, and you were to buy individual treasuries, you probably would want to explore treasuries that were all maturing very, very soon. So here's an example. As of this recording, you could get a one month treasury. So a treasury maturing in one month, the annual yield on that would be around 5.2%. It's really good. The annual yield is that's, that's, that's extremely good. But the problem is, is that you have to manually go buy the treasury, wait for it to mature. And then once it matures, you, then you got to roll it out again. So how can you take some of the hassle out of that? Well, just like a muni money market fund, you could explore a treasury money market fund. So a money market fund comprised almost exclusively or 100% of treasuries. Now, here's the beautiful part about treasuries is that not only do you have that incredibly high degree of safety, high liquidity, if you do it through a money market fund, again, they're all maturing within the next couple of days, but they are tax-free on the state level. So even if you're someone who maybe isn't in an incredibly high tax bracket that would receive a benefit from a traditional muni money market fund, maybe you live somewhere like California, for example, and it would benefit you to evade California state taxes. Well, treasuries would, would allow you to do this because the interest that they generate are tax-free on the state level. So really, really powerful. And again, an incredibly high degree of safety. Now, one of the most common questions that I've seen and that I've received tons of times throughout my career is, and this may sound silly, but it, it gets asked all the time, is, are treasuries FDIC insured? So if you buy a treasury, right, in your brokerage account, you buy an individual treasury or you buy a treasury money market fund, is it going to be FDIC insured? 
The answer is no. Technically, it is not FDIC insured. But let's think of it this way. I mean, if treasuries, I mean, if we were in this cataclysmic scenario where treasuries defaulted and and treasuries fell apart, I mean, we're, we're in a bad world if that were to happen. Do you think FDIC insurance is a priority if we if the US government can't pay treasuries to the rest of the world? Honestly, probably not. Again, I don't know what would happen. If we're in a situation where that were to happen, FDIC insurance is probably in a rough place as well. So let's say maybe you don't necessarily need treasuries, maybe you don't necessarily need muni money market funds. Well, you could always explore a third option, and that's just a plain old money market fund, okay? So if you explore just a traditional old school money market fund, what the heck is inside of there? So a traditional money market fund is a basket of very safe assets. So if you pop the hood open on just a normal money market fund, you're going to see short-term CDs, so CDs maturing in the next few days, You're going to see commercial paper. So, for example, a a company might, you know, need cash that they can easily pay back in the next month. So they issue out commercial paper for that. A repo agreement might be in there. A repo agreement is, let's say that there's a a bank with uh, some ultra short term securities that are just about to mature, but they'd like some cash now in the meantime. So they issue out some repurchase agreements to to get the liquidity now rather than waiting. And of course, you might even see treasuries within these uh, money market funds. And of course, you can buy specifically uh, muni based ones. But the idea is, is that the duration is incredibly short term, ultra short duration, stable value, trades like a mutual fund, they are highly correlated with the Federal Reserve. This is important to keep keep note of. So right now, we're hearing a lot about the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, what that means for the world and markets and interest rates, et cetera. When the Fed raises interest rates, let's say 25 basis points, money market funds move almost in lockstep with what the Fed is doing, right? And and it happens relatively quick, right? Usually within days, you see these changes happen with money market funds. And that's one reason why large institutions generally use them is because the the Fed funds rate, as if you can get as close to that as possible, you're getting as close as possible to the risk-free rate of return. Now, banks, typical bank accounts, they make money on the spread between that. So let's say the Fed funds rate is 5% and they're paying interest of 1%. Well, they're profiting 4%, right? So they're making a good amount of money on that. So by utilizing money market funds, you get to experience more of what the Fed is actually doing and get those really high interest rates that you're seeing right now. So Let's say money market funds, buying individual treasuries, but let's say that's just a little bit too much for you. And you just want just a really simple way to maximize your interest, right? So bottom line is you can explore something like a high yield savings account or even a CD. So let me explain how both of these would work in terms of uh, kind of cash substitutes or a substitute for a traditional savings account. So a high yield savings account is just a savings account, FDIC insured, generally from an online bank. Now, the benefit of these is, is that large banks, and I'm not going to name drop them, but you can think, think large banks, you see the commercials for them, you drive around your town, there's probably like 70 of these banks all over the place with drive through ATMs, right? These type of banks their savings account yields are generally almost nothing, right? It it would be generous for those banks to give you 0.30% in this interest rate environment, right? They're not in the business of really giving you much interest on your savings accounts. You are banking with them 
for the peace of mind of having the name brand and having everything in house, right? And they're not going to give you a premium for banking with them. So obviously, especially in this interest rate environment where people are get easily getting 4%, 5%, maybe more, is that is potentially thousands of dollars, depending on how much cash you have. So a high yield savings account in this environment, these are generally online banks who specialize in this. They often are at around, call it 4, 4.2, 4.3% right now. And they're FDIC insured. Now the catch is, is that they're generally lower than money market funds. Okay, so you need to be aware of that. You also need to be aware of the fact that HYSAs, if you are to just Google bank with highest yielding savings account or best HYSA, you Google that, you're probably going to see a list of banks and a bunch of names that you've never even heard of, a bunch of random banks. And you're wondering, who the heck are these people? Are these even real companies? They probably are real companies, but they're issuing out a teaser rate. Right. So some of these, these banks that have the highest yields, they're maybe giving a temporary high yield that looks really, really lucrative to bring customers in. And then they go ahead and cut that rate back down to a more normal level after six, 12 months, let's say. So you really need to be careful with that because I see, I've seen a lot of folks set up accounts with these random banks. They cut the, cut the yield down. And now they're stuck with a bank with really bad customer service. It's hard to get their money. It's just, it's just an administrative pain in the rear. Now, if you're looking for a little bit extra juice on that, and you want the FDIC insurance, you could always explore very short duration CDs. Again, this is a similar concept to buying the individual treasuries, right? You could buy one month, three months, six months, whatever CDs that generate maybe a higher interest rate than a high yield savings account. Sometimes they can be higher than a money market fund. Generally, they're still a little bit lower, but again, more attractive, but it does require uh, more manual work, right? So you buy one month CD and the interest is, uh, the annual interest is 5%. After one month it matures, you have to auto renew that CD, rebuy it into something else, right? So it's a little bit more labor intensive, but if you have the time, you have the energy, you like doing that type of stuff. I mean, I've known people who are just super into going into their accounts and doing all that and feeling like they're a little mini hedge fund wizard, right? (laughs) I mean, if that's you, go for it, go for it. It's definitely a way that you could potentially uh, boost your interest and have that FDIC insurance. So bottom line, guys, what's what's the moral of the story here? If you are someone right, with elevated income, you have lots of disposable income starting to pile up and you don't know what to do with it, at the very least, evaluate what type of interest that you're getting on your idle cash and start to explore alternative avenues for that cash. If you're someone in a very high tax bracket or an elevated tax bracket and you have the extra income coming in and you don't know what to do with this cash, well, then that's where maybe exploring muni money market funds, treasury based money market funds, treasuries period, right? Looking in that category, maybe that would benefit you a lot more. If you're not in an elevated tax bracket, maybe just a good old money market fund will do the trick. Or if it's really important for you to get FDIC insurance, High yield savings accounts and of course, ultra short duration CDs are always a potential option. So I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and rate this episode and subscribe. If you need one-on-one guidance for your particular situation, feel free to visit us at www.modernwealth.com. That's modern spelled with no vowels, wealth.com. I hope you enjoyed it guys and we'll see you next time.